So hello, everyone. Today, I'm going to introduce our paper, QEN, Applicable Taxonomy Completion via Evaluating Full Taxonomic Relations. The authors include Su Yu Chen Wang, Rui Hui Zhao, Ye Feng Zheng, and Bang Liu. And I'm Su Yu Chen Wang from University of Montreal. First, I'm going to introduce the task of taxonomy completion. Taxonomy is a hierarchical knowledge graph modeling is a or hypernemy relations. And typical taxonomies in application include Amazon product taxonomy and medical subject headings, which are shown on the left. But expert curation of a taxonomy is time consuming and taxonomies need to be updated continuously with new terms. Low coverage and inconsistency of taxonomy will hurt the performance of downstream applications. So the solution is to use a model to expand or complete a predefined seed taxonomy rather than construct them from scratch once a new term is mined, according to the rules while reducing human effort. So we can update and use taxonomy in such a, in such a role. First, we conduct concept mining, and then we do taxonomy completion using the new concept. And finally, we can use the completed taxonomy for downstream tasks. Here are some terms in the task of taxonomy completion. First, a term n is a node in or to be added to the taxonomy. Each term typically have a surface name like food, nutrient, beverage, and so on, showing the image below. And a seed taxonomy T0, including a node set n0 and an edge set E0 is the original taxonomy to be expanded. A query Q is the single new term to be added to the seed taxonomy. A candidate position PC are two terms in the seed taxonomy. They try to be the queries parent P and child C. So the task of taxonomy completion is that for a given query Q, the model first iterates over all candidate positions in the seed taxonomy. And then the model assign a score F of QPC for each position. Finally, it ranks all the candidate positions to select the top positions for Q to insert. By saying insert, it means that it added at two edges, PQ and QC. And if there's an edge between P and C, the model removes it. There are two lines of research to tackle the task of taxonomy completion. The first one is taxonomy expansion models, which aims to add leaf nodes to the taxonomy. And researches in this line include TaxoExpand, Arborist, Steam, and HEF. And the other one is taxonomy completion models. This directly tackle this, this task. And they are aimed for adding non-leaf nodes to the taxonomy. Some works include taxo order, which can add queries as leaf nodes in an order. But taxo order cannot add the query between existing seed taxonomy nodes, which limits its application scenarios. And the second word is triply matching network. And it matches the representation of a query node and the candidate position. By the time of our project, it is the only paper that can add queries between seed taxonomy nodes. And this is our main baseline. However, there are some drawbacks of prior arts. The first one is lack of embeddings for new terms. In evaluation of these papers, the evaluation data sets are from existing taxonomies, which are pretty old. And previous methods use fast text or glove embeddings as term embeddings. So you can see that in evaluation in the papers, we can encounter terms like headaches, pesticides, diarrhea, and genes, which are all common terms that can be found in the pre-trained embeddings. However, in real applications, we might encounter new terms like COVID-19, Omicron, and BA2. These are pretty new terms that cannot be found in pre-trained embeddings. So the question is how to encode the real new terms in applications. And the second one is, is about adding non-leaf or leaf query nodes. In common situation, we would like to try to insert the query between the candidate parent P and candidate child C for candidate position evaluation. But when we try to add Q as a leaf node, there isn't actually a candidate child. So previous methods in introduced the mechanism of pseudo leaf, which is a proxy to evaluate query as a leaf node with no children. However, this method has three flaws. The first is that the relation between Q and the pseudo leaf is meaningless relation. Every node in the C taxonomy has this node as its child. So evaluating relation involving the pseudo leaf doesn't make sense. The second is that pseudo leaf has no direction comparison with other potential child. 
So without features other than the three node QPC, one cannot actually decide if there are any better descendants of P to become a more proper child of Q. The third is that there is a high chance of ranking pseudo leaf as the correct child. The percentages of leaf nodes in the evaluation data sets are high, which is shown in the table below, which introduces a huge gap for previous methods on adding query as leaf or non-leaf nodes. The pseudo leaf mechanism can sometimes be a cheat that downgrades the task to the taxonomy expansion task, which only decides the correct parent for the query. So here are some innovations of our paper. The first one is we use pre-trained language models as term encoder. To use this, we first we use term descriptions instead of surface name. For example, instead of using the new term COVID-19, we extract the meaning of COVID-19 from the MeSH database, which contains common concepts like viral disorder or fever, allowing the methods to recognize new term. And secondly, we use the combination of pre-trained language models and poly encoders to generate term description. So by using term description, it in allows the model to recognize new terms. And the pre-trained language model allows powerful performance. And the code attention from poly encoder ensures lower online computation. Secondly, we add additional features for distinguishing leaf and non-leaf nodes. Since siblings share some similarities in taxonomy and siblings are a part of the taxonomic relations, we would like to compare Q with the potential siblings with best and worst semantic similarity in the candidate position. And the potential siblings are P's children, the parents' children in the C taxonomy. Our observation is that if one of the potential siblings is a valid sibling of Q, which means they share some similarity, then the parent P is more likely correct. And if one of the potential siblings is not a valid sibling of Q, then it might be a proper child of Q. So W can be a better child compared, compared to the pseudo leaf. And if no potential sibling exists, which means W and B are now, then the pseudo leaf becomes the valid child for a reason. It is the only choice. So this mechanism provides both more features for accurate positioning and provide evidence to choose pseudo leaf as a valid child for a reason. And secondly, we conduct placeholder replacement to ignore meaningless parent child or sibling relations involving pseudo leaf, which I'll introduce later. The model design begins with the multi level position matching. For a query Q and the candidate position PC, we find the two potential siblings by semantic similarity. And the semantic similarity is calculated from the cosine distance of surface names average word to vac embeddings. If the parent P has no children, which means there are no potential siblings, the potential siblings are actually pseudo leaf, which can act as a feature for the model that the pseudo leaf is the only possible child for Q in this candidate position. And to enhance robustness, the B and W, the two potential siblings, are substituted with random potential siblings in 10% of the time. Next, we generate the descriptions for the, for the five nodes of evaluation. We use term descriptions instead of surface name embeddings for the pre-trained language model to recognize new concepts. And in our evaluation, our data sets cover different source and characteristic of descriptions. In the WordNet verb data set, the term descriptions are from WordNet, which are short and accurate. In the mesh data set, in the description comes from the scope node of each mesh term's description data, which are long and accurate. And for the same eval food, they comes from they, they don't have a natural description from the data set. So we generate the description based on a WordNet based generation algorithm. They are short and sometimes inaccurate. And the term descriptions for the three data sets we use will also be published for future research. In the next step, we generate the term representations based on the, the descriptions. We encode term descriptions into a fixed length set of represent representation vectors. In the first step, we use the pre-trained language model. In our implementation, it is a distilled bird to encode the term descriptions and we preserve the full output, which is, a, which is a matrix. And then we put the matrix into the code attention module from poly encoders to compress the pre-trained language model's output into a fixed length set of representations for each term. For each term, we compress the output to a length of M representation vectors. 
By avoiding conducting cross-attention in the pre-trained language model, the term representation C for each C taxonomy nodes can be pre-computed offline. So during online inference, we only need to compute the queries representation and we can avoid running pre-trained language model for many times. And then having the representation vectors for the five nodes, we can conduct parent detection and sibling detection. For the parent detector, we use the last and minus one representations to detect the unidirectional parent-child relations, which are PQ and QC. These are unidirectional, so we need to use a model that can preserve the ordering. So we adopt a two-layer transformer that takes two, two and minus two representation vectors as input, and this module outputs a relational representation H. And for the sibling detector, we use the last term description, last term representation to detect bidirectional sibling relations QB and QW. Since sibling relations are typically similarity, so we need to remove the ordering. So we use a single layer MLP that performs text matching like computation, which can show in a red rectangle below. This term removes the, removes the sign to remove the ordering. And this module also outputs relational representation S. And mm, different from previous papers, instead of detecting the relations using four sets of different parameters, the QEN module unifies the relations into parent, child, and sibling, which ensures parameter efficiency. And lastly, we conduct quadruple evaluation with replacement. Relations involving pseudo leaves are meaningless, so we substitute relations involving pseudo leaf with a placeholder vector. The placeholder holds the feature that an involved node, child, or potential sibling does not exist. We evaluate a candidate position based on four taxonomic relations. Two parent-child relations, PQ and QC, these are for basic candidate position evaluation. And we add two sibling relations, QB and QW, both for performance enhancing and leaf or non-leaf node justification. And we perform quadruple evaluation using a two-layer MLP and output a score for ranking. Our experiment setting, we use three data sets that have different characteristics. First, the word net verb is a verb taxonomy of SEM eval 16 task 14. It is a large general domain verb with short and accurate term descriptions. And for mesh, it is a subgraph of mesh, which is medium sized medical domain nouns with long, accurate term descriptions. And for SEM eval 16 food, it is a small size, full domain nouns with short and sometimes inaccurate term descriptions. Our baseline methods include simple methods like bilinear model or neural tensor network and state-of-the-art taxonomy expansion methods, which are taxo expand and arborist, and state-of-the-art taxonomy completion methods, of course, TMN. And our evaluation metrics include mean rank, mean reciprocal rank, recall at K and precision at K. From our main experiment results, we can see that our model QEN achieves state-of-the-art performance in all three data sets, which shows that QEN can perform well across domains and is robust to different lengths and source of term descriptions and data set size. We also separate the leaf, leaf, leaf queries and non-leaf queries and evaluate them. For queries as leaf nodes, our model achieves comparable performance compared to the baselines. But for the non-leaf queries, our model achieves actually significant better performance, especially on the smaller data sets, which is semi-well food. We also conduct ablation studies. In the ablation study, we remove the placeholder during the quadruple evaluation. It results in a performance drop, which means that relations involving pseudo-leaf is harmful. And we also remove the sibling relations, which results in a large performance drop. So the sibling relations are crucial for taxonomy completion. And we also try to add auxiliary task following Zhang et al., which is the TMN paper. We add auxiliary task to the model training process. For each of the four taxonomic relations, we add weighted supervision based on the replaced relational representation. So as you can see that we add four different BCE losses in, in our loss function. 
For word line verb, adding auxiliary task can boost performance, but for semi-well food, it may decrease the performance. And the results does not, does not indicate a consistent trend when tuning a lambda. So we don't use the lambda in our main model. And the conclusion and future works. For the conclusion, for taxonomy completion task, it is beneficial to first use term descriptions instead of surface names, and second, use pre-trained language model and code attention. Third, introducing, introduce sibling relations, and fourth, substitute relation representations involving the pseudo leaf. And potential future works include first, utilize the modules of QEN in other taxonomy related tasks, and second, design a better paradigm for taxonomy completion that bypasses the usage of pseudo leaf. And third, in incorporating taxonomy completion with taxonomy based downstream tasks. And that's all. Thank you. Very good. We're just ever so slightly over time, um, but I'd like to nevertheless um, allow Victor to ask his question if if you yeah, want. Uh, Otherwise, yeah. I can read it out loud. Sure, I can do it uh, real quick. Okay. So I might have missed it, but why do you uh, only consider the two siblings W and B the worst and best? Why not other possible siblings? Uh, actually, um, there are um, several reasons. The first one is that not not all the parents have so many siblings. So two siblings um, can is the minimum to fulfill our observations and and motivations. And and yeah, so the W and B are just samples of the potential siblings to reduce the computation. And secondly, are these W and B uh, in any sense distinguishable from each other? Sometimes they are distinguishable, but since we compute the semantic similarity with virtual vec vectors that cannot um, cover all the terms we used, so we also incorporate that mechanism to substitute it with 10% of the time with random, with random um, siblings to enhance the robustness. Thank you. Here. 